Hello and welcome back to Try Me True Revolution of Your Mind and Energy. Um, in today's video, we are going to talk about authenticity and the challenge of being authentic or the challenges or some of the main challenges about being authentic or being your true self and then I'm gonna give you seven steps or I would rather say practices that I follow in order to to be my true self or continuing to try to be my true self uh, against everyone and anything uh, so why is difficult to be authentic uh, and what is the challenges of being yourself you can see all this social media talking about be yourself embrace yourself love yourself uh, mental health self you can hear a lot of those things that tell you how what to do or how to be or just uh, be it just do it and and so and so on however uh, developing authentic authenticity it's very challenging uh, because it consists in two parts number one being self-aware and number two trusting yourself Developing awareness, it's uh, another animal itself. Awareness about anything, your body, your hair, your legs, physical awareness. Uh, then we have intellectual awareness, who you are intellectually, spiritually, who you are. As a female or a male, who you are. What are your values? Values. Uh, what do you stand for? What are your beliefs? And then this is awareness is recognizing the parts of you that you are, that you believe and you follow, and learning to trust your intellectual or spiritual or invisible self or not very intellectual self. Um, just learning to trust even your craziest self, if you want to call this. Learning to trust myself as well. I am struggling with this right now. And the reason that I'm creating this video is because I, I like to believe that I'm not alone in this uh, struggling or in this journey of of having difficulties of, of being myself and adopting myself and and just like trying to choose myself over and over again for the last year or so and, and drop drop things out. So it's very difficult what I'm talking about. And here I'm gonna break down the challenges of doing this, of being authentic some of those challenges are conscious um, which mean we realize them and we understand and a lot of those challenges are kind of not very clear they're kind of foggy we never think about them and we never acknowledge them and of course we never overcome those because it takes time to get deep into those things and and we usually are so busy with other people, pleasing others, uh, make them content, taking care of others, just constantly being busy with other people. I'm just thinking, uh, I was coming home from the salon today and, and I had like a bunch of things in my head and um, and I'm just outside of my door and my neighbor stops me and she doesn't even ask how are you she started talking and and she spent like maybe 30 or 40 minutes talking about her health what she's gonna do with her life 
uh, and I try to remember this person is my neighbor for the last four or five years. I'm trying to remember one time her asking me about me or just like ever being interested in me and and this is never and I'm thinking probably there is a lot of people around you around all of us that are really busy with with their lives with their themselves they never have time and space to acknowledge who are you and what's going on with you and so on so um unaware unaware that there is other people in the world besides her my neighbor she isn't aware that the world is beyond her the people around are beyond what she want to do with herself with her life and so on it's it's a very strange thing but i think we are like a little children sometimes we don't grow up much we don't we are not aware not only because awareness starts with self and then you slowly become aware of the neighbor the other neighbor the car the cat no the world is not just you and your body and and you keeping others busy with you the world is beyond you so i share this little story talking about self-awareness because once somebody start to be aware of their body of their interests of their spirituality and so on like naturally would come this personal growth growth that will bring you to being aware of first your surrounding the room the window clean dirty organized disorganized messy then out of trying to be beautiful and make selfies on on social media that nowadays the society is busy with you will develop awareness for um for the things around you physical things so you can you will start to be aware of the trees of the cats of the squirrels of the neighbors flowers or grass how often they clean or or, or whatsoever is happening and slowly this awareness will grow if you develop of course and you grow uh, i heard this i read the book maybe when i was about 15 I was 15 and I remember this portion of a book that I read it was saying that the special agents or special people have seven levels of awareness um, I don't know if this is true you know they read also these things uh, cats have seven lives there is a lot of weird things that you can read out there but uh, somewhere back then, when I was 15, um, I got this book. I don't think I read the whole book. I just remember opening a few pages. My father wouldn't let me read books uh, because he, he would have a very particular um, mental health problems. So he wanted to isolate me from the rest of the world, which he did for about uh, 19, almost 19 years until I was legally able to uh, cho choose for me or get some freedom. But I just remember um, this poem says, being used to be in jail now, even if it's free, you don't know what to do with your freedom. So I read this portion talking about how to, to develop this uh, awareness and um, in a healthy society they the children develop this awareness about themselves when they grow up in a healthy environment which i didn't have so i don't know um how is that experience like but uh, i developed this awareness of myself uh, in the forest in the mountains and i continue developing this uh with 
time until now i'm still alive i'm still here um so i will give you some tips about self-awareness it starts with uh, your body your physical appearance your hands legs uh, exercising and feeling your muscle it's a great self-awareness uh, exercise or practice uh, seeing yourself in the mirror and be aware of your body of your shapes of how you move dancing I used to do dancing dancing is a wonderful self-aware practice and if you dance with a partner it's a different experience also very beautiful I think uh, dancing, if you especially dance, I used to dance like valser and tango and this type of dances with a partner. Dancing uh, in a couple develops your awareness about yourself and you learn to trust your body and when you do spins and so on. I was also doing acrobatic. This is a great way to develop awareness of your body abilities and overcome fears as well as body and mind. And also trusting your partner. This is very, if you do sport with partner, you would understand the bond, the bond or do something with someone that isn't like unhealthy drinking or what's not. It's more like create something. It's a very, um, it's a very challenging thing uh, and very beautiful too when you are able to make something out of working together with with other people so uh, this is some exercises for self-awareness uh, color awareness sound awareness uh, voice awareness your own voice or voice of other people how you pronounce words awareness um, I, I do this little exercise when I read. It's very weird. I'm going to share with you. It's called reading and understanding awareness. Reading a phrase and trying to think this person who wrote this, what they meant, what they wanted to say. Because sometimes if you read the same phrase to 10 people, they will tell you 10 different things. And this is very interesting. Uh, I perceive myself in one way and I just did not long ago an exercise asking my friends what they think it's my powerful sides and I was surprised they see in me things that I never thought I had so um, aware how other people perceive you for example is a way to develop awareness or even care um, I think that I have such a good memory because I am very um, present if I am interested in to know about someone I would I would listen them I would listen them actively and attentively and trying to understand the story the moment what is happening how they're living this how they're feeling in certain ways how they overcome certain situation is very fascinating to me and this is also a level of awareness, being aware of other people's reality, of other people's existence. And more I talk to people, more passionate I get about knowing people and learning about their ways of perceiving reality, seeing their limitations and, and the glimpse of how they could, some people could see just certain things. Uh, and some people could see some bigger picture, you know, of, of the reality. It's very, very fascinating. So awareness. Awareness is very, very important to uh, get into your true authentic self. And now that we talk a little bit about awareness, I'm going to put a note here. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, difficulties of being authentic and I think this type of challenges that I'm gonna point now most of the people have had or they have in this precise moment while I'm recording this video but they're not aware of this uh, and I will call this lack of freedom although it's not exactly lack of freedom sometimes could be exactly lack of freedom to be yourself but it's not always like this but in early age since 
since there is a child the child is learning by coping by touching by feeling by tasting developing your senses as a child you have two figures usually it's the parents in the first six years or seven years of a child that they say don't do this don't do this don't go there don't eat this uh, sometimes it's not even spoken, but let's say the child is trying to taste something, the mother will take it out of him, this is dangerous, she would take away the child and prevent the child from getting any physical damages or hurting himself or herself or so on. So the first role of limitation of you experiencing yourself is for safety done by the parent. Or at least this is the perfect case scenario. But then unfortunately the parents, 99% of the parents do um, kind of get lost in this game of playing goddess. I will say this because for the child, parent is a god. A parent says something and you believe this 100%. There is people that never grow up from this fantasy. The parents say uh, this is... Uh, cup and you repeat yes my mother says this is cup so it's a cup you better agree with this or you're not my friend so a lot of people remain in this blindfold um, state where they blindly follow their parents I would call fantasies or limited beliefs or um, just rules rules and those rules usually are created by parents, all of the parents, they do desire to have some control over the child for safety, security, uh, for the person's or the parent comfort. There are different reasons why parents uh, need this. And with time, more parents, the child in the first ages, it's just learning to to experience the world around them, the parents then are unable to stop controlling what the child do. They constantly, many parents subconsciously, don't do this, don't do that, don't play with this person, don't... A lot of parents, I would say any parent that I have met so far, they would have this natural need of control. They feel like if you control them, so they're safe. Some healthy parents are able to slowly, slowly let go of this grip of being overprotective, of uh, being mistrustful, and, and so on and so on. But as a children, parents and children want to, children want the love and approval, and the parents want the, the comfortable child, you no? Know? Nobody wants the child that is breaking plates into the wall. Of course, all the parents teach the children to be part of society, to interact in society and to, to be one with society, to live in society, to be civilized. The parents are the bridge between the wild child, the wild bison or leon, and the society. This is the bridge. The parents create the bridge. Your wild self, your wild children that do crazy things. I remember my nephew right now. Then the parents educate you to be in society, to live in society, to behave, to speak, to dress properly, uh, and so on and so on. Some children doesn't like clothes. I don't know if you ever work with children. They will tear them apart. I used to work with children in Italy. And that was really uh, funny. Uh, and so the thing is that parents are the bridge. They domesticate you in a way. They domesticate the children to become uh, a social animal, I will call it like that, right? And on one hand, this limits your freedom of expression, no? It limits you. There are different levels of control. Some parents threaten, emotional withdrawal, cold, hot. There are different tactics that parents use with children. Food withdrawal, no drinking, no sweet, no PlayStation, no computer. There are many ways that the parents 
exercise this power over children. I will call this domesticating power. And then the children at age seven start to go to school and then once again their wild, wild self, their wild spirits get again smashed by the society. How? Bullying. Not look like others, not dress like others, not play the same game like other children. There are many things that can happen uh, in school. But school is one of those places where a lot of children get break and they get broke and their soul is breaking and they have to fit, fit this society, fit this uh, expectation of being dressed certain way, talking certain way, having the hair fixed, having the clothes clean. All the things that other children have, and for example, I didn't have, uh, which made me, I wasn't realizing this, but it kind of made me outsider in school, which I didn't struggle, honestly. I never felt bad about it because I was really introverted and I just wanted to be left alone. So at home, I receive a lot of negative don't do's and something is wrong with you. And when I go to, to school, I was like, I can find, it doesn't matter if somebody laugh on my shoes, on my dirty or poor or horrible clothes. I can handle that. In school for me was less abuse. So the fact that I didn't fit, it never bothered me. It never like, I didn't care. I still don't care if I fit at school. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't really matter. But school is also a tool that fabricates from a human a certain behavioral patterns. It's, a, it's like a huge machine that smashes you and teaches you that you have to act certain ways. Otherwise, it's bad for you, no? And so... Um, this is from 7 to 16, 17, and around 16, 17, the parents start to pressure even more the children. Uh, you, your profession, become a lawyer, become a dentist, become this, become that. A lot of parents have nothing achieved in life. They're Miss Nobody or Mr. Nobody, but they are uh, sitting home drinking vodka expecting the child to become something special and successful and we watch him one day in tv you know these fantasies um, this is the fantasies of who should you be in order to be a good doctor to be loved by the parent in my case there was you should not be i always wanted to be a painter as a child this was one of my childhood dreams uh, one of these was to paint and the second one was acting theater theater so now um, maybe this is a theater for you guys that watch this video and I am the actor in this video you are the main actors in the movie called life I know you never gonna see this but Yamas Manos I had a friend Manos Tikanis. I have a friend Manos in Creta. Maybe he's dead now, but I remember he would say that. Uh, as they say, nobody is dead until there is somebody alive remember them. So I guess I am still remembering. So for me it was I cannot be what I want because uh, my father, a fantasy was for me to support financially my uh, brothers and sisters. That was my uh, mission in his head. Uh, everything that I do and I did uh, pay this, I would pay and then we don't need you, you're horrible. Uh, we don't come, we don't want to talk to you until after a few years, once again, they would need money or something. 
I will pay and, and solve the problem. And then once again, I'm horrible. They don't want to talk to me. They don't want to deal with me. And guess what? The same patterns also develop uh, in my sisters and brothers, of course, because they are used for me to serve them. And, and this is where it's come the ability to say no. A big challenge uh, to be yourself. If you cannot say no, you are in trouble. Um, I was forbidden to say no ever. I remember as a child or when I grew up. Uh, I learned, I would say, different ways to express my no or to demonstrate that um, I don't want something. In some cases, I was very successful in my uh, non-verbal saying no, um, but I am still learning how to communicate more civilly when I don't want to do something. So um, saying no without fear, fear of reaction, fear of consequences, uh, and so on. As a child, we are product of a yes. You cannot say no to your parents. I don't want to do my homework. What is your parent going to say? You have to do it. So as a children, we are product of society that agrees and obeys and say yes to things that you don't want. Uh, as a children, parents force. I remember I went to tutor this guy. I didn't tutor him long. Honestly, I didn't want to tutor him. I study macroeconomics and I'm very successful, micro and macroeconomics. So the guys uh, booked me for two hours and um, his mom booked me in Boulder. I forgot his name. Either way, it was six, seven months ago. So I go to Boulder to tutor this guy. And... Uh, I never give the tools on the first class, on the first lesson. I usually train the person with time to build resilience in their brain and to be able to learn something and get use of it. So I ask him, what is your goals? He have no goals. And I ask him why your mom booked me and, and he couldn't say anything. Um, he was a very smart guy and, and he had uh, memorized the slides of this professor that he had. There was talking basics of micro and macroeconomics and there was some homework. And honestly, I was very perplexed during the two hours that I worked with him. Why this guy was here with me? And I tried to talk to him to understand like, he said to me that his mom wants him to have straight A's. And I'm thinking, why is this necessary to the mother? If he hates algebra, why he cares for him to have A's in algebra? I mean, it's his life now. He got to graduate and he have to pick a profession that he would earn money with. It's his life. It's not the mother's life. But anyways, this guy, this boy, young male, was having this thing that he cannot say to his mom that if he have a B in macro, the life wouldn't end with B. But you know, these parents that want to feel successful to children, they probably didn't go to school, they didn't have all straight A's. Uh, and you have to do it and, and this person just have to follow this. And I was like, okay, what about you trying to understand macroeconomics? So when you go to do the test, once you understand the principle, you will be able to solve any type of um, questions, right? And, and so I tried to train him, but I didn't explain to him what we are doing training for his brain. I just tried to use different tactics to see how he's gonna react. For example, I said to him, I don't know the answer of this question. Uh, what do you think is right here, no? I make him think, not for me, 
because when he goes to do the test, I can take the answers and copy them. Uh, I can use a scanner to see where the homework come from and I can get the whole correct answers. But the matter of the fact is that he will go to do the test and he's going to fail it. So I don't want to take $120 an hour for a child that is, I know is going to fail. Uh, and also, I don't want to like be this machine that repeat his slides. The, the, the professor already read the slide for the child. Why I would do the same thing? For what reason, you know? The, the boy didn't get it. He didn't get it. Uh, of course, I didn't train him completely. Uh, but I think that his priorities, he was trying to transfer me from one place to another, to another, to another. Uh, and I was honestly very content uh, that I didn't have to tutor him. But I didn't say I don't want to tutor you. I was going to put the effort and make someone out of him that he couldn't even dream to get. If he would have keep being resilient and try to to go through this difficult part, because when somebody do a brain training, it's challenging. Uh, his mindset was the professor is here, and I am below. No, because I'm his professor, he thinks I can't make mistake. I'm like I'm just giving you. I give him wrong answers a few times and. Instead of saying, you know what, I think it's a different uh, response, he filled the wrong answer. He did not think, because in his head, just because I had a master, which I do, and I know micro and macroeconomics, I cannot make mistake. And this is where the problems come in being authentic. When you put others in PD style, parents, society, relatives, girlfriend, boyfriends, and you forget to be you. You forget to think with your head. You forget to write with your hands. And you forget that your decisions implement or affect your life. I call this slavery mindset. You cannot change this mindset with memorizing a book. You cannot become an entrepreneur and successful person uh, repeating things that one million other people repeat before you and had uh, obviously exactly same results. They receive an A in the, in the class and they graduated and they're total failures in life and they are very unhappy and sad with what they are. They may achieve some money if you want to. But out of that, they are miserable in their marriages and in their personal, spiritual, and, and so on lives. It's because of this awareness of who you are. So, um, the ability to say no. This little child, 20 years old guy, could not say uh, no. He would not think. And after the first lesson, he was thinking that I would have to go around and try to fulfill whatever he wanted to because his mother paid a certain amount of money. Honestly, I was content to be over with. It was pain in, in the butt. Forgive me. But so, um, steps to uh, recognize or develop your authentic self. It's recognizing yourself and this starts with very little things. Your beliefs and opinions, your ability to say no, your limits. This is something big, the limits. Respect others and learn to request respect for your own boundaries. And discover or search for your true self. But the problem with the true self is this. You come here and you're trained to follow the parents, relatives, society, school. You want to be part of it because you want to be accepted. You want to be like others. You want to look like others. 
uh, dress like others. You don't want to be outsider, right? You got to stay in the role of the good son, good daughter. Otherwise, your parents give you the emotional withdrawal, don't love you. Sometimes you got to deserve your parents' love, right? And you have to be agreeable child in order to appease and content your parents. This is everybody I know. They, if some people, that's, I have this friend, he's in pension now, Ricardo. Hi, Ricardo. I don't know if you're going to see this. So Ricardo, at age 60 something, he's afraid to say no to his mother. 65 years old man. He cannot say no. He cannot have his life because his mother is going to say something. He cannot have his opinion because his mother is going to disagree. Uh, and she would verbally abuse him and also physically as far as I understood. And he doesn't even recognize this. He is not independent from the mother because the mother is abusive. And he is codependent but he can't see that. So, uh, how agreeable you are to avoid reactions of parents in society, no? We are agreeable. Or uh, we are avoiding to say no in order to uh, limit some negative reactions, right? So, if you start to say no, first step to authenticity. Now you're going to hate me here, but I'm going to give it to you, cruel. Being able to say no without being angry, upset, or real busy. Just know because I don't feel like it. And without fearing reactions, abuse, neglect, ghosting, manipulation tactics, punishment. This I notice that when I say no, critics, anger, this all comes when I say no. I uh, A lot of American males, when you say no, they start to verbally abuse you, uh, call you the S word, uh, name call you and put you down. Uh, let's say sometimes a guy wants to be close to you and you say no, thank you. Uh, verbal abuse. Uh, Psychological, emotional abuse, aggression. If you have people reacting on you and you are able to walk away from that and it's like this person is having some self problems without bothering about it, without feeling guilty, this is the first step of to be uh, authentic to yourself and to who you are. Number two is to take time alone. And I will tell you why time alone is so important. It's in to look inside of you. For example, write your beliefs down. What you believe in. Uh, your uh, boundaries. And recognize your limits. What upset you? What piss you off? What drives you crazy? What is the part that you can't really stand about yourself? Huh? You have those moments that you, you can't stand yourself. I just had a moment like that the past week. Mm. When you don't like yourself, stick with yourself. No, Time alone is very important. Number three, in order to be your real self and authentic self, you gotta recognize your errors. There is errors that you cannot correct. It's okay. There is errors that you just make wrong decisions sometimes. And what? Uh, not the errors that your parents tell you, no, it was bad. This was a bad decision, you lose money. Because when you lose money, you learn something. Uh, errors that you feel it was wrong uh, for you. For example, one of my errors, 
I had this fiance, he came to Bulgaria to propose. His name is Mohammed. Mohammed was very abusive, but I was very young, 21 years old. I could not understand. I thought he was just in love with me and that's why he was jealous. He was pathetic, honestly, very pathetic. And so after he was uh, physically abused for the first time, my error, I believe, is that I stayed with Mohammed after... Uh, this first time he pushed me to the ground uh, because my parents like Mohammed because he had money okay that was an error uh, when I left Mohammed you cannot imagine the resilience I received from my family sites because Mohammed was paying for their things so of course they don't uh, like this source right Nobody agree with my decision, but I think it was an error to stay with someone like this. That was a horrible decision, in my opinion, looking back right now. So what kind of errors have you done in your life? Not parents, not society, not mother, father, no, you. What kind of errors you think you did? Uh, then... Number four, in order to be your true self, you need to learn to apologize. Yes, you need to, to be humble and say, forgive me. I am sorry that was wrong. I did something bad. I'm so sorry I got angry. So, um... I am I am able to recognize when I get pissed for no reason. I, I just got pissed with one of my translator, Anna. I, I'm trying to still understand why I got so pissed. I don't think it was her. I think it was me. I was, was pissed of something from my childhood. Uh, and, uh, and I apologized to her, but I, I still feel like I couldn't explain what was going on with me. But uh, that was, I apologized. So it's very important to apologize. Apology is a spiritual practice. Uh, you have to learn to apologize to others and admit your errors or mistakes or whatever it is. Because when you're able to ask forgiveness from others, you can also forgive yourself. This is why apology is a very profound spiritual practice. A person who can never apologize, it's nobody in life. There is no matter. Uh, no matter how high you think you are in life, in society, in your career, uh, in money and so on, you are not a human that has value if you cannot apologize it's you zero in my opinion apologizing is a very deep spiritual act and it's very profound it's beyond saying i'm sorry apologize also include um recognizing that you have limits you with yourself that your abilities are limited, that your time is limited, that your resources are limited, that your actions, even sometimes you have a good intention, could have limited positive results or sometimes even negative results that you never thought about it. And also recognize that what you do can impact others negatively and hurt them. This is why it's so deep. And recognizing all this, being aware about all those things and be able to go ahead and say, I'm sorry, I, I did something wrong, please forgive me. It means that you are aware of all those things, of course, if it's sincere apology, and that the apology is the first step to change and to grow to not repeat the same uh, error again. 
For example, my step figure in Bulgaria, my stepfather, I call him stepfather, although I don't think he's even my father at all physically, but he, he would never, ever, ever apologize about anything whatsoever. Never, ever, while I was living in his house, not to me, to anyone, he would ever say I made mistake. He has never admit this and that's why he never grows, poor man, just very sick man. So apology is very, very profound. Maybe the next video should be how to apologize properly. I'm going to write it down next video, step to success. How to properly apologize. I do apologize actually. And then number five, step to self-awareness, learn to let go. I don't say let go of the past, let go of the abuse and accept it every day. No, 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 no. When I say let go, I mean there is a video that I create. Maybe you could click and find it. It's called how to filter your friends. Uh, you got to see what people are around you. I, I have a very, very few people around me. And the reason why is because I do practice this exercise of filtering. Filtering means I check who is around me. And I check how these people act. Where these people are mentally. If they appreciate me, my time my money, my kindness, my health, when I speak, if they interrupt me, if they shout with me. I already have enough people shouting at work. I don't need to give an extra time to someone who is going to interrupt me. Why? So filtering and letting go of, of the wrong people, it's a practice is like scanning how these people made you feel is this person come and had something to offer you were they positive interested they want to know about you they want to help you uplift you support you or they just throw garbage like my neighbor she would stop outside there and act like just because i see her i have to give her my time and i'm sure she would have went talking for longer if i didn't cut it off I don't have to give you time just because you're outside of my building. I don't have to do this. Number six, gratitude. I practice daily gratitude. I do. Uh, to yourself, who you are, what you have, what you do, what you don't do, what did you achieve, uh, how much did you work today, how much did you do today, you can practice gratitude in so many levels. You have to find things to be grateful for. You cannot be authentic if you stay all day long nag and nag and nag. It's like, oh, I'm so tired. And, and it's just not going to work. No. You got to. Be grateful and there are surely things in your life right now that are amazing. You gotta be grateful for. And number seven thing, and it's very important, I would say the most important thing is dream. Yes. Dream a dream of me. You have to have a dream with yourself. Not the husband, the wife, the brother, the son. Of course, you love them and wish them very good things. But daily practice of dreaming. Dreaming. It could be dreaming about sitting on the beach and watching the sunset. Your dreams doesn't have to be big and meaningful and change the world and realistical either. You can dream things that has never come and doesn't even look possible right now. Uh, but dreaming, dreaming is 
what will bring you to places you have never been before and to realities that you have never dreamed to get in touch with. So uh, being a dreamer, it's a very important and I think being a dreamer is also one of the things that saved me in my most darkest period of my life. Being a dreamer, it's uh, very powerful because you get in touch with your magical powers. You're a magician, a creator of your own life. And if you dare to dream, you dare to create. Uh, I do spend times to dream during the day. I, I like to watch outside of my window and just uh, think about things. Just the dream. I like to dream every day. Daydreaming. So uh, if you want to be successful and be someone, I like to even dream to be someone that I'm not today. Be something that I'm not right now. Be the better version of myself. Uh, sometimes I dream that I'm watching the sunset from the beach because I don't have a beach in Colorado. Dreaming is beautiful and is important. And, and this was my uh, seven advices on how to reach authenticity and how to be your authentic self. Um, I'm working on the, on the video sets or on the training about how to stop lying to yourself and reach the ne next level of success. I am dreaming this class in my head. I've been dreaming this already now for about five months. Uh, since maybe this video that I, I published a few months ago saying how to stop lying and how to stop uh, lying to others. And I am creating this training in my head. I am doing the exercises with myself right now. I'm working on myself and I'm building myself right now. And if you are just 30 people watching this, I'm going to launch this uh, free course. It's going to be free or maybe very cheap, like $20. Uh, how to stop lying and, and grow and develop yourself. Uh, we do all lie in a different degrees. Uh, and how to stop lying to yourself. Not by accident in the Bible or in the same scripture, it says the truth will let you free. And I'm sharing my little pieces of truth with you. Hopefully that will let you free, guys. It's my quiet day and talking to you for about 52 minutes. It was very tiring for me. But I do hope that you guys make this journey with me through being more authentic, more real, overcome the struggles that I'm sharing with you. And if you find this video interesting or likable, you can press like and, and give me some support back. Thank you for being here and have a great day. Bye-bye.